catalog and cocktails and hello to everyone who's actually joining us from our data.world summit which was an event that happened today um we're happy to have you here and continue the fun with some cocktails in hand some tasty beverages this is a weekly live hangout an honest no bs non-salesy conversation about enterprise data management i'm tim gasper longtime data nerd and product guy joined by juan cicada Hey, I'm Juan Cicada. I'm the principal scientist here at Data.World, and it's Wednesday. It's uh, middle of the week, end of the day. Uh, we started out the day with our summit, and we were uh, having coffee, and now we moved to a cocktail. So uh, it is uh, always a pleasure to kind of take a break and chat about data. And today, we have a very special guest, and I want to give a little bit of a backstory. Um, data mesh is such a hot topic. Uh, back in episode 44, 44 can't believe this is episode i don't know 55 almost 60 something yeah, like that something like anyway that, that was yeah. back in april we had shamak digani as a guest and it actually she was a keynote today at our summit and we always ask our guests who should we invite next and shamak said we should invite uh somebody who was her who was her coach who was her mentor and in her words a very quiet but a very wise man who has seen a lot and that is our guest today, and that is Mohamed Sadi. He's uh, the former VP of Engineering at Intuit. He's previously been at LinkedIn, where he did Kafka. He has been at Netflix, at Yahoo. He has seen so many things, and I am so excited to spend uh, this afternoon with you, Mohamed, uh, and talking about data and everything that you've been seeing. So cheers. Welcome. Great to have you here. Cheers. Thank you so much, and uh, great to be here with you, Yuan and Tim. Thanks for the invite, and uh, um, it's... It's it's great to well cheers cheers <laughs> so, um, so let's start start out with what are we drinking and, and what are we toasting for I don't know what you're drinking um, but uh, but I'm drinking uh, it's a little early so uh, I'm drinking a little bit of uh, amaro here so cheers and, and you actually mentioned it was your homemade yeah it's it's a little side thing I do so um, so that's what what I'm drinking I don't know what you're drinking. Well, I'm having a mix of a bourbon, and I'm back on my passion fruit. Uh, oh. I have a bu I have a bunch of passion fruit uh, water That's and awesome. syrup, so I'm mixing it up with uh, Waterloo uh, wa watermelon uh, water, yeah. and it's uh, really refreshing and, and some bitters in it. So that's uh, my drink right now. How well, about you, I I just planted a, a, a passion fruit plant this weekend, so I'm I'm hoping I'll get some fruit. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah. Um, I am drinking a uh, a sidecar. Um, I'm trying a new category here, getting into the the cognac a little bit. So doing cognac, nice. orange liqueur, and and lemon. And I know a lot of people argue about what are the right ratios for a sidecar. So I'm doing two ounces of cognac, one ounce of orange liqueur, and a half an ounce of lemon for those that are nerding out about a sidecar. That sounds about right. That's a <laughs> very boozy drink. And I'm going to go cheer for just we finished our summit and we had a su successful event. Uh, we had a fantastic speakers from Shimhawk to Doug Laney talking about informatics. Uh, and I mean, Bar Moses talking about data ops and so many awesome. different topics. Excellent. So cheers to that. How, how about you? What, are you? what are you toasting for? Well, I'm always toasting uh, to um, health, happiness and prosperity. But I just found out that we won the game a few minutes ago. So cheers to Man United fans. <laughs> cheers to that. <laughs> the champion leagues are going on. So we got our war <laughs> our warm up question. So today we're we'll be talking about our the data existential crisis. So when you're in your existential crisis of your own, what's your comfort food? Ice cream. What type of ice cream? Um, plain vanilla. It's got to it's just just gobble it down. That's the comfort. <laughs> How nice. About you, Jim? Well, I'll say I am a vanilla fan as well, either Ben and Jerry's or sometimes Tillamook if I can get my hands on it. But um, uh, in terms of comfort food, I would say um, Dulcet Bibimbap. So I'm I'm half Korean. Uh, I love my uh, I love a little bit of Bibimbap, which is, you know, Korean beef, rice and veggies with fried egg and a little spicy sauce. And if you can do it in a hot stone bowl, even better. So that's my comfort food. Wow, I'm going to go. Um... I like pizza, and I will confess that I will eat Domino's thin crust pepperoni and sausage. 
that's my uh, very specific comfort food. So <laughs> very, nice. very nice. All right. Well, we, we talked enough about food. Let's talk about data. And so actually earlier today, I was chatting with Shamak and, and she mentioned to me that you have a you have bottled up a lot about the dysfunction of data in the enterprise. So the, my, let's kick it off with an honest, no BS question. What's wrong with enterprise data today? <laughs> I don't know uh, if I've bottled it up or not, but uh, um, I mean, uh, if you know, for those of us who've been uh, on, you know, and on the, on working on that stuff, uh, I think it's uh, you know we've picked up over the years bits and pieces uh, of what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily. Um, you know, I wasn't going to use big words like crisis, existential crisis or anything like that. I think, you know, I just see us on a continuum. I see that uh, we've uh, we've learned a lot in the last two, three decades and um, and uh, data has grown exponentially. The value that we want to get out of data has, has also grown. Um, in fact, it's become, uh, I think the main thing that I see is that um, data has uh, has found its way into the mainstream of the product uh, offerings, you know. And um, I guess in the old days that wasn't the case. In the old days, it was kind of a side thing. It was kind of analytics as a back office thing. But but those days are over, and um, and we now have features and capabilities within the product offerings that directly. Um, are a result of the analytics work and the machine learning and all that stuff that that's happening. So, um, you know, so so the traditional ways that we have organized ourselves around data, which usually has been um, moving to a centralized organization to deal with the complexities of data, isn't isn't really addressing the needs of today. So I think I think that's where we are. Um, if it's if it's a crisis or not, um, maybe um, I, I think we need to find a solution. So that's uh, that's kind of where my head is. All right. So let, let's kind of go back a little bit. We I like how you're establishing that we've had before data was more kind of the the like the back door. Let's just make sure that it's uh, keeping the the basic stuff running about analytics and BI reporting. And now we're getting into this world where data is kind of at the front matter, right? It is we're, we're this notion of treating data as a product, and that is a that's a switch, right? Before because before mm -hmm. we just need just kind of the typical old legacy tools, right? We need our data warehouse, so we need our ETL or BI tools, and that was it. But mm -hmm. now we're taking it to the next level, and that transition is when we're realizing, wait, the way we we're doing things beforehand is not working for the stuff we want to go do now. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're being that we were seeing that's happening in the what last five, ten years or, or yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, so what is it that we're what are the like the top couple things that we that you're seeing that we must either stop doing this old thing that's not working for this new thing, or we need to go update it? Is there are there things that we just stop doing and something new we need to go do or something we need to go transform? How how, how are you seeing this? Yeah, I think fundamentally, and this goes back to the, I think, the heart of what uh, the promise maybe that data mesh is offering, which is uh, decentralizing or breaking that centralized um, organizational structure that we normally see, especially in bigger companies where um, you have, you know, like a bunch of, say, data engineers sitting in a, in a central team that are responsible for uh, collecting the data, making sure the data is good, all that, and, and getting it to the hands of the consumers who want to do something with the data. I think the, the problem with that model is, uh, first of all, it's not scalable. The accountability is not quite um, uh, in the right place. And frankly, you know, uh, the subject matter experts are really within the domain, engineering domains uh, where the product, uh, the, the main product offerings are, are, are happening. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's very common these days to see, um, I would say, uh, data related or 
data product related uh, features uh, on the backlogs of uh, of the main product offering. So, so we're seeing you know that that uh, sort of traditional uh, dichotomy, that traditional chasm that that uh, existed between the operational world and the analytics world is kind of blurring uh, blurring up and. And the old uh, the old structures aren't addressing that. So I think that's that's kind of where my head is. And you know what what are the better ways to organize ourselves and and put the accountability where it needs to be? Yeah. And I so think the answer to that is to move it to mm -hmm. to to the to the domain engineer. Move a lot of that responsibility to the uh, domain engineering teams. Uh, uh, but then. That leaves a gap. That leaves us with uh, the question of: Do we have the right tools? Do we have uh, the right infrastructure? And do we uh, do we have the tools that uh, the average engineer on the product offering side uh, would be able to do the kind of things that we expect them to do? And I think the answer to that is no. Mm. Uh, and, and that's where we also need to make uh, progress on uh, on kind of. Um, I would say eliminating that super extra uh, specialization of skills that are required to do some of the stuff that we do in, on the data side. Yeah, that that's interesting. Um, obviously, as you get into this topic, it's starting to set up a little bit around, hey, maybe the solution is the data mesh and that kind of thing. But just before we start to dive into that, you know, just focused on this sort of dysfunction that you've identified here around over centralization and and some of the issues that can come with that, right? Scale issues, accountability issues, subject matter expertise issues. Ha has this always been a problem in your view? Like, is this just like enterprise data it used to be hidden in the back office and now it's in the front office, it's in the spotlight? Or has it been exacerbated, not just by that, but like the advent of AI, the advent of self-service analytics? Is is it the combination of both of these trends that are that is forcing this so. more into view? I think so. And again, you know, I'm uh, I'm not necessarily saying that what we've done in the past was wrong. All I'm saying is that uh, looking ahead, uh, it's not going to work anymore. And you know, I, I firmly believe that you know we're on an evolutionary path. And you know, and we learn, and and go. Maybe back in the day, uh, it did make sense to, um, uh, you know, quickly get a bunch of people that know how the stuff works to get something going. But, but the problem with that approach is that it's not a durable approach. It's not a scalable approach. Uh, it might get you, you know, uh, uh, out of uh, hot water uh, uh, for a while, but. Uh, but uh, you know the other thing that you know I kind of want to throw in here is that this is an engineering problem, like any other engineering problem. Uh, you have a you know you have a problem. You need to think about the right architecture, and you need to put that in practice. And I think we kind of maybe were a little lazy uh, back in the day. Um, uh, we were just focusing on a few important um, infrastructure level tooling and kind of not really taking the bigger view of the experience and like thinking what, small thinking technical that kind of thing oh thinking nerdy yeah thinking mm -hmm. you know thinking deep you know as opposed to okay let's you know what what is the enterprise problem here and and what is the right solution and and what do we need to build in order to make that happen you know i think uh, i think we, we need to invert that a little bit because uh, today it's all about the tools and the things that we already have, you know, the big databases, the uh, query engines, the you know, the, the stuff that you need, and they're very important to to have. But um, I think we need to take a fresh look at what is the right solution, big picture. What is the right experience for the engineers? What's the right experience for the consumers? I call them producers and and consumers of data, and uh, and then see if we have the right tools or not, uh, and what are the missing pieces in the infrastructure tool chest that we have, um, and start working on them. And then that brings us into interoperabilities. You know, do we have to go down one path with uh, uh, one company, or is there actually a way to pick and choose and have interoperable bits and pieces of infrastructure? 
So you a couple of minutes ago, you you were saying that this was an engineering problem, but you've just described more of like the social aspects about it. Yeah. So and 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 I completely agree that we focus so much on the technical nerdy stuff, and I think that's always a problem is that we we we, we jump into the technical stuff, we mm -hmm. dive into the we're at the thousand foot level when we forget the big picture about it, and we 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 define success from a technical point of view instead of understanding who are the consumers and so forth. And so, but is it really, I'm, I'm going back to the thing you said, it's an engineering problem. I don't think yeah. it is an engineering problem. So this problem. is where Conway comes into the discussion, right? The Conway, Conway law is, is live and, and well here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how we organize ourselves uh, is a big part of how we architect and design things. Uh, and they go hand in hand. Uh, so, so yeah, you identified, you know, that link, which, which is great. Okay. So. So I, I do want to go, I want to talk about organizations and people and structure and, and teams and stuff like that. I want to talk about tools, but before we get there, we need to go talk about data mesh here. I know that you've been part of kind of the, seeing the birth of this uh, in supporting uh, Shamak and other folks about it. What is your definition of data mesh and, and how do we, how do we get there and who need, who actually needs to get there? Does everybody need to get there or not? And kind of open the floor there. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I, I'm sure if you ask Jean Mac the same question, she would have a much better, more eloquent answer uh, to to what is data mesh. Uh, but what excites me, or what's what really interests me about it, is is because you know, center in the argument and the discussion about data mesh is the notion of uh, decentralized ownership of data or I should say decentralized accountability of data, uh, where uh, we are, we're, we're trying to say that uh, if you are an engineering organization that today has a whole bunch, a set of microservices or whatnot, that is offering um, your uh, functional capabilities on the operational side of the business, uh, it is your responsibility also to make sure that the consumers of the data that you produce uh, can get a hold of what they need it, with the right SLAs, you know, quality assurances, uh, trustworthiness, security, uh, you know, all the aspects that go along uh, with data. Uh, is no, uh, I mean, da data and functionality are should should be treated the same uh, by by the domain engineering teams, and that's to me what is uh, what I think is needed. Uh, and if uh, data mesh is the uh, vehicle to uh, to get us there, uh, then then I'm on board. Data and functionality should be treated the same. I think that that's a beautiful sentence right there. And I think that's something that we miss, right? We think about data as the bits by itself, but you got to go do something with those bits. And Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe I should, I should have said there's, and that's really the key here that, that function there's, there's, there's new functionality that, uh, uh, that we're coming up with based on data. You know, when, when we're building, you know, ML models, uh, we are essentially introducing a new service, sort of, uh, a new function, a new uh, feature uh, to the product. Um, so all of that engineering rigor that goes into building uh, the functionality of the product applies here as well. And I think it does it today. It kind of doesn't, you know. So in some places, maybe it does. You know, and some companies probably are doing it better, and some aren't. Um, but again, I go back to two, three decades ago. Right? Used to be, hey, I'm an analyst. I need uh, to run some queries on your database. There was only one database, right? Uh, and uh, and then we engineers would tell them like, uh, yeah, well, you can't do it during the day. So why don't you come back at night when nobody's doing something, you know, and then you can run a bunch of queries. 
those days are over. You know, we, we are now much, much more integrated. Data is much more integrated into the mainstream of our products than it used to be. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the issues that we have there is that th th that's the mindset that we need to say it's over, right? Before it was like, oh, you can only run things on the weekend. Uh, you, you can only do things at night. Like this is over. And if you still live like this, uh, you got to, you got, you got, you got, <laughs> you can't live that like that anymore, period. Uh, and so many companies still live like this. So mm -hmm. on, on that aspect, what is your, what are, what are your recommendations? What, how do you start getting over that? You mean getting over which aspect of it specifically? Well, I mean, well, that, I mean, well, if that's my problem right now, like if, if and, I, and I, I encounter this all the time, right? Yeah, we can only, um, we cannot upload the data during the week. It has to be on Sunday night because it's going to break things. Okay. Right. Um, well, you know what we did? I mean, if you, if you look at our, um, uh, the solution that we came up with, right, over the years was to create that uh, chasm between the two worlds, right? We, we created a, you know, there's the operational side, don't touch it, you know, you don't have any business going there. But here's your other playground, you know, you can copy data, you can, you know, collect data from this side, bring it over here, and then do whatever you want to do with it, just leave us alone. Uh, may, you know, that got, got us going for maybe a decade or so, which was fun, right? You know, we had cloud, we had all kinds of new nifty toys uh, to, uh, to scale, um, you know, the separation of, uh, you know, infrastructure from, from the application. All that stuff was great, but we were still operating, and we still are to this day, largely operating in two different worlds. And, and what I'm saying is uh, there are forces, natural forces, rightly, that are saying, look, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you guys are doing on the analytics side that needs to come back into the product. How do we do that? Uh, but then as soon as you begin to think about those things, it becomes an engineering problem, right? You need continuous delivery. You need you know, to be able to build things reliably. You need to, you know, if you can't have a script, you know, on your laptop, you know, somewhere that nobody knows about anymore, right? So, uh, so, so to me, some of the movement and data mesh might be one of many, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, there are, th these are the, some of the discussions are happening in these areas that are saying, okay, how do we do that? How do we uh, create a data product? What does a data product even mean? Uh, is it on the analytics side? I mean, I, I was having a conversation with John Mike not that long ago, arguing, you know, why can't the data product actually serve uh, information to the operational side? Uh, you know, because back in the day, and, and I've been build, I've built these systems before to move data back and forth between the two sides. I mean, Kafka was was built primarily to be able to be that vehicle, and uh, and it's not just one way; it's both ways, right? Um, uh, so, so there is a need. Uh, the question is, what's the right approach? Is copying and you know having sort of some kind of a highway between the two worlds the best way to do it? Uh, hmm. If you talk to the virtualization people, they might have a different answer altogether uh, about that. Um, yeah, you have you have different religions depending on who you're kind of talking to here, yeah. right? Um, and. And I know some of what you were talking there was more on the technology side, right? But the, obviously, another part of this is more on the people side and the team organization side and the responsibility and accountability side. And, you know, as you think about people, you know, this this sandbox, as you've been, as you've, as you've kind of noted, has been built up where there can be more self-service, but also a lot more chaos. You know, is there, um, you know, is this separation of sort of, data people and business people has that been a a good thing or has that been a bad thing is it a mixed thing and and as you start thinking about things like data mesh do we have to change the way that we organize these things and organize yeah. these divides i think so I, I think that goes to the crux of the issue here you know are we organized for success uh going forward and then for the next decade 
uh, and and I would argue that uh, uh, that you know I, I don't think we can achieve success by uh, throwing everything into a central organization and say, okay, this is too complicated. It's all data related. Uh, nobody understands the stuff anyway. So we'll just, you know, hire a bunch of really smart people, put them in a central organization and say, you guys deal with anything that has to do with data. Uh, that, that's what I've been arguing all along uh, in, you know, so far that, that I think we need to think about a different organizational pattern where, um, where the uh, that we actually think about you know notions like data products, like real products uh, that are part of the what engineering teams offer, and and then what's left at the center becomes essentially the uh, platform and infrastructure related tooling and. Uh, uh, um, Experiences like data mesh, for example, require or it argues that we should have a mesh of data products that are interrelated, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and there's a, a way to organize these things, or uh, there's a way to discover uh, them. There's a way to understand them. There's a way to be uh, sure of the trustworthiness of of the. Uh, uh, of the data product. So there, there are elements that are, are centrally governed. Um, but, uh, but really, you know, the autonomy is, is the key here within the data product so that we can put the accountability within the right domain. So I think that structure to me is a more appealing structure. Uh, it's a more scalable structure. I think we've, we've seen it work in, and other aspects of what gets produced on the engineering side. Yeah. I don't see why we can't. An example that I bring usually, I don't know if it's a great example or not, but uh, if you go back 10 years or so, um, we were kind of in a similar nascent situation with mobile technologies, right? Um, and back in the day, uh, you know, we all thought, you know, why, won't, why don't we have a mobile team, right? I mean, who has a mobile team anymore? I mean, unless you're building infrastructure for it. I mean, everybody is doing mobile. It, be, it became, you know, it's, it's become part of our DNA. I think data is going through a similar journey in that sense, um, where um, we can't just leave it, you know, on the side. It, it has to get, uh, it has to come in and become part of the mainstream engineering work we do. What, one thing you said is elements, there are elements that do need to be centrally governed. So let me go back. I completely I agree with you that kind of the issue that we that we're in is that we have always a centralized structure. Every there's a data team for the organization. Like that's not going to go scale. We need to figure out how to go decentralize that. I think the issue is to figure out what is that balance. There is some centralization that needs to go on. Um, what is that? I what should be centrally governed? My perspective, for example, is that we need to go centralize a lot of the core metadata models, like the the the, the core schemas. And I think uh, this is something I learned from Intuit was the, the fixed, the flexible, and the custom. Uh, and so there are things that are fixed on the models that you should just go use. You, should go, you can go extend them. So I think that's something that should be governed centrally. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to learn from you. Yeah, what be centralized, yeah centralized? that may be one. Um, I would say, you know, we should use a little bit of caution not to go down sort of the old path of trying to uh, specify every last schema to the detail centrally, you know, that, that's, and I know that's not what you said, uh, yeah, um, I mean, that, but that is a slippery slope that, I that agree. Should, yeah, there should be a warning sign, you know, when we go down on that road. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe there are core entities within an enterprise, maybe a, half a dozen of them. I mean, they're hopefully they're not like a lot um, that everybody needs to agree on. Um, you know, like your identity might be one of those things, right? Um, but I think there are m other things as well. Like I think a lot of the stuff that uh, we need to do around compliance, around security, around, you know, um, there might be different security postures for different organizations uh, because of, 
many different things. And compliance in certain industries are also uh, very important, especially in, let's say in the financial industries or, or other stuff. So there might be things that we have to do and, and we can't just leave it to anyone, you know, as you said, is, is one of those fixed things, not flexible or free things. Um, uh, and I think that, you know, any design we come up with for data mesh um, uh, should and will incorporate a mechanism to be able to accomplish that within reason. So what's the role of the CDO in all of this? Are they, are they driving the implementation of the data mesh? Are they, you know, sort of an obstacle to the whole thing? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting, <laughs> that's an yeah, interesting. Yeah. They are an obstacle or <laughs> no, I mean, it's an interesting discussion because I think, um, uh, and, 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 and Juan and I were, were talking and joking about this, uh, not that long ago. You know, I sometimes, uh, for effect and provocation, say things like, you know, I'm not sure if we're, uh, we're going to have any CDOs in 10 years. Um, whether that's true or not is kind of irrelevant. Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's mostly to make a point. And, uh, and the point is, um, if the CDOs today um, are going to help break that monolith and get us to the to a better organizational structure, then I would say that's what they need to do. I mean, that's that's their job. Uh, uh, and by the way, this is not just around data engineering. I mean, I think a lot of what I just talked about applies equally to data science and what's happening on that. Uh, side of the world. I, I fundamentally believe, you know, any work that is happening on machine learning and stuff will, will have to be coordinated very closely with the engineering teams that are, uh, so, so it, it naturally also, I think, uh, we will see a trend, uh, that that monolith will, will, uh, also, uh, go away and we'll see data scientists. Actually, what we will see is that the true democratization of data and, and data science, uh, in my opinion, which is where uh, just engineers uh, will be able to build models. Um, a truly, least, a truly least, empowered model. Yeah, at least, you know, the basic ones, you know, not, not the fancy stuff that you have to go do science. Uh, but there are plenty of uh, canned uh, approaches that might get us 80% there. And, and there's no reason why engineers shouldn't be able to do that. Maybe they're just lacking some tooling. So anyway, uh, if a CDO is thinking in terms of the next 10 years and, and trying to figure out how to uh, uh, organize and structure the teams, then I think they're doing a great job. Um, with after 10 years, uh, what are they gonna do? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know. I mean, I, again, sometimes half jokingly say, do we have a chief mobile officer? I mean, uh, I don't think we do. And, uh, and, and to, to some extent, um, I'm not sure uh, if we're going to have a CDO in 10 years. Yeah. Or do we I mean, need to have a CDO? So, sometimes I hear titles like the chief AI officer and things like that. And I'm like, oh, that that's not going to exist in 10 years. Right. Like, yeah. But then yeah. sometimes I think CDO and I'm like, well, I mean, maybe. Right. Maybe yeah. that will exist. But maybe, maybe to your point, maybe, maybe the role evolves a little bit. Right. Maybe the, it has to. It, it definitely has to evolve, I think. And how does this even the connection with the CIO then, too? Or a lot of this infrastructure is now going to the cloud and they're like, I don't I mean, know. You're <laughs> asking the wrong person about all these titles. Like, <laughs> I'm just an engineer. Well, I mean, it, one thing is a title, but we also see is like, where, what is everybody doing within the organization? At the end of the day, within the, the data we have within an organization, we need to, uh, we're in this new era. Like we need to treat it as a product. We need to, I love what you're saying is that we need to make sure that we know who's consuming it. They know how to go use it, how that functionality is tied to it. Uh, if I can trust it, what, what are the SLAs? Like this is something that it kind of sounds obvious today now but it's it, there is this big uh, thing gap that i mean why aren't we getting there uh, which leads me to kind of go move to the next conversation next topic is about 
tooling and technology. I'm very curious. Is what technology needs to be invented to be able to accomplish all of this of treating data as a product? Or do you think that the, the, most of the technology is just there? We just have to repurpose it. Where's your head at on this? I think we have a lot of good technology, but I'm not sure if everything is here yet. Um, again, like um, Tim, you're a product guy. Like, how do you how do you build a product? I mean, this is no different. Uh, you you start from uh, the problem. You you go to your personas and 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 the the people that that you you want to build a product for. In this case, we're talking about engineers, the developers, as the producers of these data products, and and um, uh, analysts and data scientists and others as the consumers. And, and we really will go through whether the experiences today that they are going through uh, accomplishing what they need to do is optimal for what they need to do. And, and I think you will agree that, uh, that at least the state of our technology today is such that if I go to any engineering team right now and say, hey, guess what, you know, Christmas is early, uh, you now own, uh, you know, all this uh, data product stuff that uh, this other team used to own. Now they'll go like, uh, I can't do it. You know, I don't know how to do it. Um, the tools are either not um, straightforward enough for them to be able to use, or it doesn't integrate well with the other set of tools that they have on on the operational side. So I think they're missing, uh, definitely missing pieces. And especially when you talk about data mesh and, and introducing new concepts like the connectivity between the, the data products, uh, obviously the tools to do that aren't qu quite there. Um, maybe Jean Mac is working on them. I don't know. Uh, I know my team, you know, when, uh, at my old X team at uh, Intuit is also doing some work around that. Um, so, so yeah, I think there are definitely still areas that we need to work on. Yeah. Are there, are there certain tools that you think exist today that you think play an important role here? Like, you know, is, you know, around governance, around testing that you think are, are key here versus just holes, just holes that exist? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, probably the answer is that uh, there are probably flavors of solutions for for problems kind of sprinkled here and there but that's also another problem i think where uh, um, there's a basic lack of interoperability between some of these things for example like let's take um you mentioned you know governance access con let's let's take access control for example right to data mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are solutions for that but you know once you pick one solution you kind of have you get you have to go down a certain path, either use just this tool or uh, that. To, it's very difficult if you're a multi-vendor uh, company to, to have the tools um, uh, uh, agree and work on the same set of principles, low-level principles, like in this case, access control mechanisms. Um, so, again, so maybe... the companies are trying to do that. Um, yeah. Databricks has, has, has done some work on that. Um, AWS no, that's, that's yeah. on that, but they're not the same. So, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And yeah, just to, to to keep on getting specific here, because we're just kind of exploring this particular topic, which is like, so for like access control, for example, you're kind of saying that like, you know, you may use Amazon, but maybe you also use Azure, and maybe you also, you know, use a virtualization tool, and and maybe you have Okta for your identity management, and so now you're stuck in this situation where you're trying to choose like which tool are you going to use for access control, and how much do you centralize, and the pros and cons of that. Is that kind of where you're going with with as you talk about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess kind of. It, it, whatever I'm going is that you know. Uh, some of the decisions that we make very early on the infrastructure side, low-level infrastructure side, takes us completely, you know, in one direction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure I like that. You know, I I, I would have I mean, maybe this is you know a, a very romantic you know idea, uh, and and it will never happen. But uh, if we had some level of agreement on. Um, uh, lower level infrastructure elements that would that would help interoperability a lot between uh, 
uh, tools so that we can pick and choose mm -hmm. uh, what we feel is the right choice for each organization. Uh, today, that, that decision-making process isn't like that. It's more like, do we pick vendor A or do we pick vendor B? Or, you know, and then you know, it becomes yeah. one of those are you arguing do we need to have more interoperability standards for this i think so i think you know again i i don't know how achievable that is it, as i said it might be a romantic notion but um but i think it's worth an effort so what are your thoughts from the 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 entire uh, semantic web w3c specs about metadata rdf and all this stuff on, on schemas ontologies i mean th that's my background right and i and i truly believe that this is how we are going to be this is how we can interoperate data and knowledge at scale i mean that's what the web is itself right the web has has uris right http like all oh, these are the standards that we have there and we and, and that was the whole that is the whole goal of bringing out all these uh, standards to data and using the whole web, the, the web as the infrastructure, I believe that that's the way how to go do that. And um, and 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 you might because that is your area and that's your where your expertise is. You might, I'm sure, you can identify much better than I can. Uh, what are those uh, foundational elements or el elemental things that you believe need to be standardized? Um, my background is more infrastructure. So I tend to think about some of those aspects. And I think at each layer, there might be a few of these things that, uh, that we could uh, think and talk about standardization that, that will ultimately help in interoperability as a whole. Um, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily get into specifics of vendors, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, and I, stuff, I, I, but we're, to we're totally on board. I mean, the, uh, this is the non-salesy podcast on purpose, right? We're not pushing anything here. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but I do would like to get pushed more into the, into the categories of things, right? So what are the, the, the categories of tools? So, I mean, a, a warehouse is probably involved, right? Yeah, you, ha you have to go move data around. So some sort of ETL or some sort of, uh, I mean- Maybe, uh, yes, maybe. But see, I think this is exactly um, kind of where that inversion needs to happen in our discussion. That, you know, instead of, I mean, instead of starting, instead of the starting point being the tools, like warehouse or uh, this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, the starting point of the conversation needs to sort of be, what do we need? Uh, and do we have it? Uh, the warehouses, I have no opinion on whether, like I can envision um, a data product, some data product might decide that it is best for them to go use a warehouse technology to to build whatever it is, as long as they adhere to the rest of the, the, the rules of the game, which is uh, the autonomy of data products within the engineering organizations, the um, uh, easy way to uh, discover, understand uh, the data, um, uh, be accountable for the quality of the data, as long as you know they. Uh, they adhere to those principles, the, the basic principles here. I, I you know, VI or Emacs, I, I don't know, I mean. Um, this, is, this is a great, I'm having this really nice aha moment at this moment. You just said autonomy, discoverability, and be accountable. If you, if you adhere to those prin principles, which in a way is kind of aligned with the, the, the data mesh uh, uh, principles, you don't care how you're implementing that. You don't care what technology you do. Just be auto enable people to be autonomous, domains to be autonomous, enable those data products to be discoverable. And yes, let them be accountable. That's when I have data product yeah. owners and managers. So everything, like everything else is, it's, you know, within, bound, within reason, right? Like we want to make sure that we don't, uh, again, gravitate back to the old habits as well, right? So um, sometimes the tooling may accidentally, uh, again, sort of move us back there. So um, I don't know, there's a, there's a certain amount of discipline involved. 
in 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 adhering to the rules. Mm. Uh, and I also think you know there there's probably some things that the tools can do to protect us from accidentally uh, a sort of violating those rules. Um, and I'm hoping that over the next several years we will see uh, that these uh, that 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 these uh, uh, are actually the concerns also of the toolmakers. You know, I think the toolmakers, if you. If, my advice to them uh, would be, uh, I think the persona of your customers are changing and you need to, to go figure that out. That's a very interesting insight right there. The person, the, you, yeah, for existing vendor, vendors who've been around for so long, right? They've been selling their tools to a different specific type of persona. Yeah, they're selling to the specialists, right? They're sp selling to people who deeply understand maybe the inner workings of some of this stuff. I think, I think uh, it, if we want to democratize the way that we've been discussing so far, which is eliminate the uh, hyper specialization that we see today in our field and, and allow um, uh, engineers i'm not putting any qualify you know qualification on them uh, uh to to be able to do most of this stuff then then yeah then the persona has changed you know you you it, it the experience has to fit much more nicely with what the engineers are doing on the operational side so i'm see i came from that side to to the analytics world, I, I wasn't born uh, on the you know uh, in the analytics world, uh, so so that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. one final take. The yesterday, I think yesterday, uh, Matt Turk comes out right with his uh, the, the the data landscape, uh, and this year it's the machine learning AI and data landscape where mm -hmm. it's this this gigantic uh, PDF picture with so many yeah, different logos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I look at that stuff and I'm like, then we have the conversation like right now. I'm like, wait, our goal is to go create data products that we know that consumers are going to go in and, and they're and they're the teams are autonomous, they can go build them, right? And they have accountability, they're discoverable. And I'm like, do we need all those tools that are in that landscape? And I, I'm just I just kind of yeah. so overwhelmed. I don't even know what to think. <laughs> the answer is probably no, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I haven't looked in detail of exactly what all of the. I just saw like I, you can't even read that, right? I, I mean, know. it's like it, you it's need a magnifying hard. glass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. So this is always a, a, an interesting. Uh, I, I look. I look. Quote unquote. Look forward to it every year, but just to see how overwhelmed I'm going to get. I just what's going to happen next year. But anyways. Uh, hey, moment. We you before we started, you said, "Hey, can we even talk about for this for an hour?" Look, it, we're almost fifty minutes. Yeah. In, so. yeah well, <laughs> great job, guys. Uh, <laughs> keeping the conversation going. I don't know. Uh, looks like some people are bored. No CDOs in ten years. Yawn. Okay. <laughs> that was their only takeaway. All right. Well, let, let, let's get into our lightning round here. So we got some uh, questions. We've been uh, writing uh, Tim and I. Let me go start first. So is a is a data mesh concept something that's going to have a lasting relevance? Yes or no? Yes. That was an easy one. <laughs> I mean, is, I'm just uh, saying yes or no. I'm not explaining. So, yes. well, I mean, if you want to, anything no, quickly, no. You want to I think we talked about it plenty. Yeah. So, next one um, Is the state of data better today than it was 10 years ago? Yes. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, but the, it's not great. <laughs> Better, but not. Yeah. Let's not be satisfied. Yeah. All right. Well, will CIOs take on more of the CDO responsibilities in the near future? I have no. I, I mean, I don't know what's. Look, I don't know what half of these titles mean. Uh, so, <laughs> so. That's your honest no BS answer. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know. Mamad, we, we don't know either. We, we're, we're 55 <laughs> episodes in. We're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I think we should go next. We should invite a bunch of CIOs going forward and see. What <laughs> yeah, help us should. define. Let's create the job description together. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, last uh, last lightning round question for you. Um, so, if data is going through, you know, a similar journey, maybe as mobile did, particularly like the CDOs versus the chief mobile officer, that kind of thing. Um, do, do you think that most people in the org someday are going to be data people? Like, is this divide of data people and business people going to start to go away? No, mo mo like most literacy? people, I, I think everyone will be an engineering people person. Mm. Right? I, I, I Like that, that dichotomy, that distinction that this is data and, and something else is not, I think just going to be less and less and less and less. Well, it uh, it's our T T T time. So Tim, take it, take us away with some takeaways. A oh lot of goodness. good stuff in here. The takeaway section is always hard for our episode because there's so much that we cover. And and you just said I think everyone will become engineering people, and that and that just like triggered ten questions in my mind. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that, and maybe I'll follow up with you on that. Um, so uh, takeaways. So I, I really liked uh, as we got into the dysfunctions, you talked about sort of the over centralization and some of the challenges that happened and happened there uh, around sort of accountability around scale around SMEs and domains and things. Uh, and you had mentioned that throwing people together to try to solve the problem isn't really a durable approach. Uh, and, I, and I couldn't agree more with that. And, and as you were talking, I know you didn't explicitly say this, but uh, you, you mentioned these along the way. It seemed to be some like mega trends here that you're kind of pointing to. Like one of them is around the movement from the back office to the front office that you talked about. There's sort of this overall sort of, you know, AI, ML, self-service, this sort of attempt to democratize and also do more intelligent things. Um, but also you said some things that really went around sort of data being more seen as business value, like data people and leaders needing to now zoom out not just from that deep technical view, but actually needed to become more broad and business oriented. And, and that's interesting. I mean, it seems to be a lot of the trigger around us trying to create new approaches and, and create more value from our data. So yeah, um, yeah I, I, setup. I, I agree with that. I just need to maybe mention one thing because I'm no, I know my data scientist friends are going to fault me. What I'm saying about the trend here, especially around uh, the democratization, democratization aspect, isn't in any way to suggest that uh, the that you know to diminish the value uh, uh, that the data scientists are bringing to the to the game. In fact, what I'm trying to do is to make sure that they can focus on what really matters, uh, and and uh, and some of the stuff that some of the lower hanging fruit that can be democratized. Uh, should be, and 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 the focus for for data science should should move really to a higher level uh, that requires that level of expertise and specialization that they uh, that they bring and not. Uh, uh, so if there are things we can do with tooling, let's do it and let's free them up mm -hmm. to go do yeah. bigger, better things. You want to give them a product that they are, they understand it. They can go, they can find it. They understand it. They can go run. Yeah. With I mean, go come up with science things. Yeah. Come up with new algorithms, come up with the science behind some of the stuff that it doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would love for them to, to focus on that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I got several here, but I'm going to go a, a few. Um, definitely. We can't, we won't be successful throwing things into a centralized organization so they can manage the data. So we need to have this different organizational pattern, right? Think about data products and really think about them as real products, right? That the engineering teams are, are there to go offer. Um, at, at the center, you want to have the platform and infrastructure, infrastructure tooling. And, and when we think about the data mesh, the whole mesh aspect is that all these data products are connected such that they can then be discovered and people can understand them. Um, we, there is this balance that I, I've always talked about this, and I like that we're it seems like we're on the same page of understanding how you want to be decentralized, but there are some things that you want to centrally govern, right? And talk about some of the core entities. And I love how you were specific. You're saying half a dozen. They should be really small because you want to, you don't you want to be careful about going down that slippery slope to start governing everything, right? Other things to be governed uh, at a central is identity, compliance, and security. Um, 
I'm 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 loving these kind of that, that adhere to the principles of of being autonomous, discoverability, and be accountable. And and really, at the end of the day, I don't really care how much the technology plays or the role. It's really just make sure that you can accomplish these three things. But be careful. Don't go back to your old habits. Uh, and then I know we talked about titles and stuff, but if, if the CDO or actually whoever, if, if their job is to make sure you're breaking that monolithic to have a better structure, then yeah keep doing that job because whatever title you have, we need to have the people who are breaking that monolithic and understanding how we can be autonomous, discover data products such that they're also uh, accountable. That's our summary. Wow. You're smart. I, I, I no, you're smart. We're just I'm, good note takers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening and taking notes. <laughs> Moment. Let me throw it back to you to, to wrap up here. One, what's your advice? And second, who should we invite next? My advice, um, have fun doing whatever you're doing. That's really what matters. So uh, that's my advice to everyone. Um, who should you um, invite next? Uh, I would love to see uh, some of the um, heavy hitters of data infrastructure uh, come on your show and tell us what they think the future is. Um, Bring in, you know, execs from AWS, GCP, Azure, Databricks, whoever. I don't. I mean, if you want names, I'll I'll give you names offline. But uh, I would love to uh, uh, to hear sort of some of their uh, uh, outlook and uh, what they're uh, planning. I, I would definitely uh, like to like to go have them on the show, and we will reach out to them, and we appreciate uh, any introductions you can make. Cool. Ahmed, thank you so much. This was a fantastic discussion. Um, so many takeaways. And we just had a handful and we got a whole two pages of notes here between Tim and I. So um, thank you. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. It was fun. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Have a great Wednesday. Cheers to you all. Bye.